Jeffrey and Marcus Jordan both had 40 inch verticals, both played division one basketball and both had every resource in the world as their father was the greatest basketball player of all time. But neither came close to the NBA and the question is why? In particular, Marcus Jordan had the pedigree to get drafted if he had benefited from the same hype Bronny James recently has. As in the 2011 college season, Marcus averaged 15.2 points per game as a sophomore at UCF, a massive leap in stats from the eight points per game he was averaging as a freshman and with this type of jump. If his dad was pulling some strings, we easily could have seen Marcus emerge as a draft prospect. We could have seen him in the NBA. He had the athletic gifts. He had the household name that would put fans in the seats. But instead, we had off-court drama. We had an infamous trip to Vegas. And just one year later, after his breakout sophomore season, Marcus would quit college basketball. And the most noteworthy thing he has done since is date Scottie Pippen's ex-wife. A crazy turn of events that demands the question, what ruined Jeffrey and Marcus Jordan's basketball career? What caused them to fade into obscurity while on the opposite end? In a similar situation, we have watched Bronny James become a household name and become a second round pick for the Lakers this very summer. That is the story for today. So what's up, Mike here? And the question on everyone's mind when talking about Michael Jordan's sons is immediately, how was he as a father? The narrative that the public has seemed to create is that Jordan was an ice cold dad who did not care about his sons in any way, definitely not in the same way that LeBron has with his family. That Mike was too busy being a star to care about Marcus and Jeff, and that ultimately, that is what ruined them. Personally, I do not believe that to be the case. Michael Jordan attended several of his son's games. He did an interview with Jeffrey Jordan when he was attending Illinois. Marcus himself has painted a different picture. He said that early on, his dad made it clear that he wasn't going to be there to save the day for his boys, that they needed their games to speak for themselves. A parenting decision that has forced greatness out of certain players. That's not to say that these two brothers did not have it tough. Jeffrey Jordan certainly had it the worst. Growing up in Michael Jordan's shadows, he was expected to be a sensation, a top prospect as many NBA players' sons are, but instead, Jeff just did not have the same talent as his dad. Michael Jordan had a fire within him that burned everyone around him as MJ was never going to allow anyone to get the best of him. Mike was simply going to outwork anyone who tried. This is the type of mental toughness you cannot teach. It was the type of mental toughness Mike was trying to instill in his sons. And at the end of the day, all the athleticism in the world cannot save you if you just don't want it enough. That's not to say Jeffrey Jordan did not have a chance to prove himself. He even received an invitation to the 2007 Jordan brand classic, despite the fact that he was a very lowly recruited player, only receiving offers from Valparaiso and Loyola Chicago. And at the end of the day, the simple answer for Jeffrey Jordan may have been simply that he was just not a good enough basketball player to make it. In college, Jeff did not go the easy route. He did not accept a scholarship offer to a smaller school. Instead, he decided to play at the University of Illinois, where he was only a preferred walk-on, which meant he was going to need to outwork everyone to earn a real spot. This did not happen. As a freshman, Jeff averaged one point per game. As a sophomore, Jeff averaged one point per game. As a junior, he averaged 1.6 points per game. A lot of people have criticized Bronny James for not being deserving of a second round pick by the Lakers. However, Bronny seems to have a relentless work ethic, and Bronny was also a near top ranked to recruit coming out of high school and showed out at the McDonald's All-American game. So it's easy to understand why Jeff compared to Bronny was never seen as a serious prospect. However, with Marcus Jordan, we have a completely different story. To me, it is actually shocking that Marcus Jordan never got the chance to at least try to make an NBA roster when we consider both his last name, but also his achievements and play on the basketball court. Looking back at Jeff and Marcus's high school basketball careers, a lot has been made over one game, a game in which future number seven pick Eric Gordon Gordon absolutely torched a nationally ranked Whitney Young, the school Marcus and Jeff attended, for 43 points as Jeff and Marcus combined for just eight as their dad watched in dead silence in the crowd. This was an iconic moment in Eric Gordon's career and a nightmare for the Jordan brothers, but we need to remember, we already know at this point that Jeff was not a big time prospect. Marcus, however, was just a sophomore in this game and one performance does not make a player's career. So while this was bad, Marcus did take this lump and continued on to become one of the top basketball players in the state of Illinois. As a senior, Marcus led Whitney Young to a state championship victory in a close game where he showcased that he was both clutch and a noticeably better player than his brother. Marcus scored 19 points in the state championship game. He was the state tournament MVP and he accepted a scholarship to the University of Central Florida where he would quickly become the team's best player. If circumstances were different, Marcus Jordan's sophomore season would not only have put him on the map for the NBA draft, but I will argue 
you. This sophomore year easily could have gotten him drafted. We'll get into why that did not happen in a second, but as a sophomore, Marcus truly showed his basketball potential. During his freshman season, he was good. Definitely better than his brother, as he was named to the Conference USA All-Freshman Team, and from there, he only improved. Marcus went from averaging just 8 points per game in year 1 to 15.2 points per game in year 2, and he was also the leading scorer on a UCF team that won 21 games. On top of this, in two separate games versus national competition with all eyes on him, Marcus really showcased his abilities. Against number 16 Florida, Marcus led UCF in scoring with 18 points on 6 of 11 shooting in an upset win, and then against Miami, he again led the way with 23 points in a 6-point Central Florida victory. That win over Miami put them at 10-0 on the season, and right there, in that moment, getting drafted was a real possibility. Looking at the 2011 draft, here are some stats from some second round picks. Malcolm Lee, 13 points, 2 assists per game on under 44% shooting. He was taken 43rd. Josh Selby, 7.3 points per game on 37.3% shooting, taken 49th. Jeremy Tyler, the man the Charlotte Bobcats, aka Michael Jordan, drafted that season, averaged 9.9 .9 points per game in Japan, and would play in just 104 NBA games before never again making an NBA roster after the 2014 season. The numbers and performances Marcus had in the 2011 season easily could have seen him drafted only. He received absolutely zero NBA draft buzz, and the question is why? Well, again, Michael Jordan was a sink or swim on yourself type of fop. He was not hands-on like LeBron, which meant Marcus did not have tremendous hype headed into college. He was expected to generate that hype himself, and after a solid sophomore season, he did have a chance if he continued to improve and play even better, he would have the opportunity to earn an NBA roster spot. That would not happen, but perhaps just as damaging was that unlike Bronny, who has had a spotless image just like his dad, Marcus was the center of attention in several negative off-court news stories. To begin his college career, Marcus refused to wear Adidas out of loyalty to his dad, which is nice in theory. However, this caused national news as UCF lost their Adidas sponsorship because of Marcus alone. Then, before his sophomore season, Season, it was reported that Marcus and his brother lost between fifty and eighty thousand dollars in Las Vegas, and this was reported to the Nevada Gaming Control Board because Marcus was not old enough to gamble at the time. Continuing forward in 2012, Marcus was arrested for resisting arrest after a drunken argument with two women, and you get the picture. Unlike Bronny, who has never been a problem and has only put fans in the seats because of his last name and his play, Marcus was deemed an off-court risk while he was in a situation where his professional future future could have gone either way. If Marcus was seen as a relentless worker who was going to be a positive teammate on an NBA roster, he very well could have been drafted in 2011. Unfortunately though, things would go the complete opposite way. While Michael Jordan had the need in him to become great, Marcus Jordan's work ethic was called into question very quickly. In fact, his lack of motivation was very clear during his junior season. In a year where he could have earned an NBA roster spot, Marcus became a much worse basketball player, averaging less points, a assists, and rebounds per game while also now shooting just 37% from the field. 13.7 points per game on 37% shooting was never going to draw NBA interest, but we saw his potential during his sophomore season. He could have rebounded during his senior season only. Again, we find that lack of fire, we find that lack of passion, as after UCF was deemed ineligible to make the NCAA tournament in 2012, Marcus shockingly quit the team and never pursued a basketball career again. It may be a note that his brother Jeff had joined the team in 2010, averaging just 2.7 points per game in 2011, and so perhaps this had a negative influence on Marcus. But at the end of the day, it seems a lack of passion, a lack of work ethic, a lack of desire to be great is what truly kept Marcus Jordan from becoming an NBA player. He had the physical gifts, he had the stats in 2011, only he did what he didn't have was a relentless desire to pursue a basketball career, instead opening a shoe store and in recent news dating Scott Pippen's ex-wife. So there we have it, the answer to why Michael Jordan's sons never made it to the NBA. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you're still here, I really think you're going to enjoy this video on the worst recent draft picks the NBA has seen, or this video that YouTube is personally recommending for you.